Welcome back, everybody, to the Detroit Lions franchise here on Madden 20. That is the final time I'm going to be saying that because this is the series finale. What a ride it's been. Five very fun seasons. Two Super Bowl championships, including in the last episode, beating the Cincinnati Bengals by a score of 27 to 16, led by a great game from quarterback Tez Lawson and a Super Bowl MVP effort from defensive end Jaquavius Highsmith. Today's episode will be the annual 10-year sim. This is the third, third time I've done a 10-year simulation on YouTube. I did it in Madden 18 with the Chargers franchise and last year in Madden 19 with the Dolphins franchise. This year's 10-year sim is a little bit different, though, because I really wanted to end this series off well. I really wanted to have a very good ending because this has been an awesome series. Definitely my favorite Madden franchise I've done, although I did very much enjoy both the Chargers and Dolphins series. So rather than just doing the traditional 10-year simulation, what I did was I simulated year by year, recorded the stats for all the notable players on our team, recorded all of their awards, accolades, which teams they played for. That's something Madden does not keep track of. So I did this because I wanted to see what would happen to the players who retired, whose numbers we wouldn't be able to see. And then also I want to be able to see when players join certain teams. Madden does not keep track of that which is very annoying. Here's a quick little breeze through of the uh, career stats, by the way, because uh, I do want to show these just so you guys all have an, kind of an understanding where players currently are. But as I was saying, I wanted to do year by year. I wanted to really see what happened to these players' careers. I really wanted to follow along. Going into it, I knew this video was going to take a lot of time to make, and I was right. It did take a while, but it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed seeing what happened to all of these players. And if you want to see what happened... I have a Google Sheets in the description that goes through all the important players of the series. It shows which teams they played for, their stats and stuff. So if you want to see that at the end of the video or during the video, it's in the description. I do encourage you to check it out because it did take a lot of time for me to make. And I think you guys would enjoy um, looking through it. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I want to see what happens to the careers of guys like Tez Lawson. Does he stay on the Lions all 10 years or does he go somewhere else? Want to see what happens to Carryon Johnson, all of our receivers, all of these awesome defensive players, guys like Jaquavius Highsmith, Mike Renwick, Ed Oliver, Jadobia Wuzie, Darius Slay, Shanarian Budka, everybody. By the way, little fun fact, Darius Slay has 43 career interceptions at this moment, 26 of which were caught in the series, 9 of which went for pick sixes, 934 interception return yards. That is a lot. Uh, Darius Slay not only was able to make plays getting the football, but he also made plays with the football. So there, are, he, he he's one of those guys especially that I wanted to do the 10-year sim for because he's obviously going to retire within the next 10 years or else he'd be playing in his 40s, which as a corner, that is highly unlikely. So I did want to see what happened with players like him. Would Darius Slay retire as a Lion? Would pretty much all of these players... Would they stick in Detroit? Would they go elsewhere? All of that uh, good stuff. So that's really why I wanted to do it a little bit differently this year. And I've got to say I'm really happy with how this turned out. And I think this has been an awesome episode. So I do also want to quickly patrol through the legacy score. We will go over these in a little bit. I've noticed that the threshold to make the Hall of Fame is usually 10,000 points. Currently, if everybody on this team retired today, our Hall of Famers would be Darius Slay and Trey Flowers. But for what it's worth, I have noticed some players just, like, disappear. Like, they're old enough to retire, and it makes sense for them to retire, but they don't show up in the transaction log. And even if they have over 10,000 points, they don't make the Hall of Fame. So I put everything on auto. I am controlling nothing, by the way. No contracts, no drafting, no trading, nothing. I wish I put the league um, league advancement on manual, but it, it didn't really affect things too bad. So here's one final look at the team you all know and love. This team has brought so many memories, whether they were guys like Carrion, Hawkinson, Slay, Galladay, who have been on the team since day one. Players we've drafted like Lawrence Parnell, Tez Lawson, Akeem Downing, uh, Devontae Higgins, Tim John, Mike Renwick, Jaquavius Highsmith, or players we've traded for, like Shaquem Griffin, Ed Oliver, David DeCastro. We've really had a very fun time building up this football team, and I'm happy to say that I've been able to build up my favorite team in real life, the Detroit Lions, into a winner. So uh, without further ado, 
it is time to simulate 10 years into the future and see what happens to the careers of all these players we all know and love. So we have officially gone 10 years in the future right about now. In the year 2033, the Super Bowl 68 is between the Packers, yuck, and the Kansas City Chiefs. So uh, how many players from the Super Bowl team that beat the Bengals are still on the roster 10 seasons later? In our Chargers franchise, three players remained. On our Dolphins franchise, three players remained. And here at the Lions, three players remain. The first one is quarterback Tez Lawson. He has been a Lion his whole career. Now at the age of 34, he's played 13 years as the starting quarterback in each season. At wide receiver, Dwayne Stuber is still here. Stuber was an undrafted rookie we signed, and he has managed to stick around in the league as a productive player through 13 seasons. And then on defense, Mike Renwick, who, as you will see shortly, is an absolute monster. So, in the Chargers series, wide receiver Spencer Bailey, tight end Eric Vasquez, and kicker James Brandstater stuck around. In the Dolphins series, Tua, Ricky Aguayo, and Matt Hawk all stuck. So, as you can notice, with the Chargers and Dolphins series, a lot of special teamers stayed. For us, neither Sam Martin or Tim John are still on the team. And believe it or not, after that Super Bowl win against the Bengals, Neither of them played another down in a Lions jersey again. Martin left in free agency, I want to say to the Chiefs. He wasn't in the league that long. And then Tim John, he was the backup kicker in the first year of the Sim. The game had assigned Jason Martin. And then after that, John has bounced around the league on like five different teams, but he's actually had a pretty successful career. We'll talk about him in a minute. So, unfortunately, the team's success wasn't really there. We did make the playoffs six times. Uh, but no Super Bowl appearances or Super Bowl wins, and Coach Calvin Johnson's legacy score has really not changed at all. So now it's time to see what exactly has happened to all of these players. Starting with Tez Lawson, he is now a 98 overall at his peak. He was a 99. And uh, the first three seasons, remember, we obviously played, and the past 10 have been in the sim. Lawson has been a very good quarterback. He's never won an MVP. He's never won an Offensive Player of the Year. But he, in the 10-year sim, made a total of five or six Pro Bowls. Unfortunately, in the last year, he did get injured. He missed like six games. That's why his numbers for the final season are kind of low, which is crazy because Tez Lawson has never missed a game before that. He was totally healthy in the three years we had him. In the first nine years of the sim, he was totally healthy. So, I mean, it has been a very injury-free career for the most part for Tez Lawson. He received two monster extensions. Uh, in his career with us, his contract is up. I'm curious to see if the game would have brought him back. Seven career Pro Bowls, including five in the 10-year sim. The only award he won in the sim was the best quarterback in 2028. Dwayne Stuber, meanwhile, for an undrafted free agent, those are very good numbers. Obviously, his career started off a little bit slow. As a rookie, he got a lot of playing time. Juju Smith-Schuster missed a large chunk of that year with an injury. Freddie Bonner Sanders got suspended late, so Dwayne Stuber played a lot there, but the next three seasons, he barely touched the field. Then Kenny Galladay left. He signed with the Eagles, and after that, Dwayne Stuber's been a consistent starter ever since. He's made two Pro Bowls. In this past season, he had career highs in receptions and yards, and for the first time in his career, he's finished with over 1,000 receiving yards in his 13th year of play as a 34-year-old. As good as Tez Lawson and Dwayne Stuber have been, none of them can compare to Mike Renwick, who has had an insane career. 154 and a half career sacks. Renwick has gotten at least double-digit sacks in all 10 years of the simulation. We had him for two years. He had a very good rookie year. Was kind of quiet this past season. And then in the 10-year sim, he went off, including these past five years with ridiculous numbers. He even had 20 and a half sacks one year. He's getting paid QB money, but... He deserves it. Renwick has made seven Pro Bowls the past six. He, he did not make a Pro Bowl the first four years of the 10-year sim, and then he's made them for the past six years. Led the league in sacks twice. Won the best linebacker four years in a row. Won defensive player of the year. This season he got 20 and a half sacks. It has been a Hall of Fame career for Mike Renwick. So I want to look at the rest of the league. Currently there are nine active players who started this series in the league who are still in the NFL. Those players are Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, Dwayne Haskins, TJ Hawkinson, Irv Smith, Aldrick Rosas, Michael Dixon, and J.K. Scott. The only three players still on their same teams are Mahomes, 
Irv Smith, and Michael Dixon. I did want to see Patrick Mahomes' career numbers. Uh, he has not been the superstar that he is expected to be. Now, he's had some very good seasons. He has three MVPs, one of which he won in real life, one of which he won during the series, and then one of which he won during the 10-year sim. Mahomes has made a number of Super Bowls. I don't believe he's ever won one, though. Obviously, he lost to us in the series. He's about to play the Green Bay Packers in the current Super Bowl, so go Chiefs, wink, wink. Uh, Deshaun Watson, Lamar Jackson are both up there. They spent most of their careers with their same teams, the Texans and Ravens, respectively. We also see a lot of the quarterbacks who were drafted in this series. Max Mahorn still with the Giants. Noah Curry still with the Dolphins. Kent Fields remains a Bengal. Louis Salazar is still a Viking. Zachary Weary is still a Packer. And of those quarterbacks, the only one to win, win a Super Bowl ring is Zachary Weary. He won one in the very first year of the 10-year sim as a second-year pro. And then we'll try to win another one here. So Louis Salazar does not have a championship. Kent Fields, Noah Curry, um, Max Mahorn, none of them have won championships. But you know who has won championships? A few other highly drafted quarterbacks. Josiah Cole of the Jaguars, Antoine Nan, Greg Terry, and Jack Jackson. All of them were starting quarterbacks on Super Bowl winning teams. The only 10,000-yard rusher currently is running back Cardarius Cotton of the Steelers. He is the only running back who I believe was in the league during uh, this series who is still in the league. A lot of today's young running backs like Ezekiel Elliott, Saquon Barkley, Kerryon Johnson, Kareem Hunt, they were all very, very good in the 10-year sim. The current active leading receiver is former Lion Freddie Bonner Sanders who is still with the Buffalo Bills. After spending his first two years in Detroit, the Lions traded him to Buffalo where he has stayed the past 12 years, and he has continued to dominate. I think this trade it was a win-win for both sides. The Bills got themselves an elite receiver in Freddie Bonner Sanders, who's had one hell of a career. And we got Ed Oliver, who has turned into a Hall of Famer. So, I think that trade worked out pretty well for both sides. Freddie Bonner Sanders has made five Pro Bowls, won the Best Receiver Award twice, and led the league in receptions twice. Behind him, TJ Hawkinson with over 1,000 catches, over... 11,000 yards, it's been a storybook career for Hawkinson, 15 seasons. Now, he has spent 14 of those seasons with our Lions. He is, there have been multiple players, I've noticed, who stuck around on the team the whole time until the final year. Hawkinson is one of them. He has spent this past season with the Broncos, but before that, he has had a 14-year career with the Lions. Seven Pro Bowl appearances. He was not outstanding in the 10-year sim. He did make three Pro Bowls during the Sims, so he hasn't been terrible. The other highly drafted players during the series, Kareem McDougal, still at the Steelers. Traquan Lawson, Tez's younger brother, now at the Chicago Bears. He won a Super Bowl, I believe, with Chicago. We also come across former Lion Lawrence Parnell, who is now with the Washington Redskins, or should I say the Washington football team. Parnell spent his first five seasons in Detroit and has spent the past seven in the nation's capital. I've got to say, Parnell's been a little bit disappointing during the 10-year sim. He's only made one Pro Bowl, which was in 2031. He did make a Pro Bowl his first two years with us. Um, but during the sim, he wasn't insane. He wasn't bad. He's had a very solid career, over 700 catches, over 9,000 yards, but nothing insane. There's Dwayne Stuber very high up there. So as you can see, not really any real players left at receiver. The only tight ends left are Hawkinson and Irv Smith. Now we move to the offensive line. Who's allowed the most sacks? It's Akeem Downing, who's played 216 career games, by the way. Just like Hawkinson, Downing has spent his whole career with us, except for this past year, which has been with the Cleveland Browns. Obviously, Downing allowed a lot of sacks in this series, but I think he had a really solid career with us. He was the very first player we drafted back in Season 1. Remember, we decided between him and pass rusher Darquell Hyder, Hyder has turned out to have a Hall of Fame career, so couldn't really go wrong either way. Downing was no stranger to the Pro Bowl during the 10-year sim. He has eight career Pro Bowl appearances. He might be a Hall of Famer as well. And the other active offensive lineman still who was on our team is Vaughn Moulton. Just like Downing, Moulton spent the first nine years of the 10-year sim with our Lions and has spent this past year with the Kansas City Chiefs, where he tries to beat the Packers in a Super Bowl. Bolton is currently an 89 overall. He is still really good. And for a number of years, Bolton was the highest rated offensive lineman 
in the game. He peaked at like a 93-94. Not enough offensive linemen progressed well in this game. Moulton was an exception. So Von Moulton made 10 Pro Bowls, won the best offensive lineman award four times. What a career for him. So our offensive tackle spots, Akeem Downing at left tackle, Von Moulton at right tackle, they have been locked down for pretty much the entirety of the 10 years sim. Now looking at defense, we come across linebacker Owen Jackson, who is now with the Cincinnati Bengals. After his rookie contract, Jackson signed with the Carolina Panthers, where his older cousin A.J. Jackson has been playing. Uh, Owen spent four years with us, seven seasons in Carolina, and then this past year with the Cincinnati Bengals. Owen Jackson's been a consistent starter all 10 years. He's never made a Pro Bowl, but he's always been a consistently good player. He has never allowed more than one fumble per year. He hits so hard, but he does not allow fumbles. This was the case in college, and this has been the case in the pros. So, very good career for Jackson. As we continue to scroll, a lot of recognizable faces. Remember, Kirby Sanders was the number one overall pick in his draft by the Vikings. Very first player to be drafted in this series. He was a corner with X-Factor. A few years later, the Packers selected cornerback Devon Dobbins, number one overall. He is still with Green Bay. He also had X-Factor. So, those guys have had very successful careers as we run into... Sharoning Budka. Budka also was on our team throughout the entirety of the 10 year sim, except for this past year, which has been with the Denver Broncos. Budka made one Pro Bowl, which was in his second to last season as a 12th year, 34 year old pro. Very impressive. So Budka spent, I think, what, what was that, 13 years with us? That's a lot. So Renwick is second among active players all time in sacks. You know who has half a sack more than him? Jaquavi is high Smith. He is now with the Houston Texans, and I don't think anyone's been better in this 10 years sim than Jaquavi is high Smith. My God, has he been good. First two years with it were with us in the series, and then after that, he was a monster. High Smith made nine Pro Bowls. The first nine years of the 10 years sim, he made a Pro Bowl. He recorded double digit sacks in the first nine years of the sim. After his rookie contract, he has now spent the past eight seasons of his career. With the Texans, where he's been a monster, career high of 19 and a half sacks. He has made 10 Pro Bowls, led the league in sacks twice, best defensive lineman twice, and holds a defensive player of the year as well. So what a career for the former fourth round draft pick, Jaquavius Highsmith. There's Darquell Hyder with 129 and a half sacks. Obviously, he was picked by Washington. He has also spent time with the Saints and the Falcons. Quantavius October, the man in the myth of legend at 112. Tyson Parker at 108, he was one of the few players drafted ahead of Tez Lawson a number of years ago. As uh, we continue to go forth, interceptions. Kenya Heyman, he was a very high draft pick by the Ravens a number of years ago. We also come across uh, Sharon Buga once again. And then we see Devontae Higgins, who is now with the Chicago Bears. Higgins lost a Super Bowl with Chicago, so he ended up making another championship. After spending his first five years with the Lions, he made a Pro Bowl in his third year. He has spent the past six seasons with the divisional rival Bears. That Pro Bowl is a third year pro is his only time to uh, the Pro Bowl. So it's been a very good career for Higgins. Nothing outstanding, but he's been very solid. We also come across Gerald Jackson, who once Tracy Walker slowed down, Jackson was the starter at three safety for a number of years for us. I think the past three years he has been with the Houston Texans, but before that, uh, the rest of his career, which was um, eight seasons, were all with the Lions. Only three career interceptions, but he's always been a consistent player, never made a Pro Bowl, but he's been a quality starter for a while. It looks like he's now entering the backup stages of his career. Now on to special teams. We come across uh, Aldrich Rosas is the only real kicker left. Justin Tucker retired as a 40-year-old. So Tim John is with Jacksonville. It's been a very weird career, to say the least, for John. As I said, the only season he played for us was the first season of the series. He was a backup uh, as a second-year pro. He didn't play in 2024. And he has spent time with the Seahawks, the Redskins, the Jets, the Browns, and now the Jaguars. He even made a Super Bowl with the Jets. He ended up losing. John has won the best kicker award twice. He made a Pro Bowl once. I, how do you win the best kicker twice, made for Pro Bowl once? I don't know how that works. Oh, well. Uh, but it's been a very solid career for John. He's been a consistent starter on five different teams. 
And then at punter, the only real punters left are Michael Dixon and J.K. Scott, who is now with our team. Funny enough, Sam Martin, I believe, retired fairly early on. I didn't expect him to stick around. I think he'd be like 43 at this point. So I wanted to go to coaching stats. As you can see, Calvin Johnson has the third most wins for a head coach who are still active. And second is Paul Ranson of the Baltimore Ravens. He was hired pretty early into the series. And then first is Freddie Kitchens, who uh, him and Calvin have both coached 15 seasons. So Calvin's career record is 148, 90, and 2, giving him a winning percentage of around 67%. That is very high. So on average, he's winning around 10 games a year. A career postseason record of 9 and 7, including 3 and 6 in the 10 year sim, and a career Super Bowl record of 2 and 0. So, looking at the final career totals, there are a lot of new names here Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Baker Mayfield, all up there for passing yards, passing touchdowns as well. I assume if we did a little bit more, Tez Lawson's name would probably be in here. By the way, am I not the only one who noticed that in 15 seasons, Lawson still has not thrown 100 interceptions yet? He's at 99. That's insane. So looking at rushing yards, Ezekiel Elliott is the rushing champ. Uh, Gurley is third all-time. Barkley, fifth. Carryon Johnson, sixth. He spent his whole career with Detroit. 14 seasons, one in real life, five in the series, and then eight in the 10-year sim where he was a monster. Joe Mixon and Kareem Hunt also are now in the top 10. Carryon has passed Barry Sanders, by the way. That is very cool. Rushing touchdowns still belongs to Emmitt Smith. Gurley in second. He spent most of his career with the Rams. Finished out in Jacksonville. Carry on is in fourth. If he hadn't gotten hurt a couple times, he probably would be second. Uh, receiving yards. This has pretty much been unchanged till uh, Jerry Rice. I think Freddie Bonner Sanders could eventually make this list if he stays in the league a couple more years. And then receiving touchdowns as well. Christian Kirk is on here for the Cardinals. Marquise Brown as well. I don't think Kirk or Brown left their respective teams, which is uh, fairly impressive. For catches, still Jerry Rice. By a landslide. Jason Witten is also on there twice. Okay. Freddie Bonner Sanders is like at like 1,046. So he's very close to the top 10. For sacks, Miles Garrett is third. Von Miller, four. Aaron Donald is fifth. Khalil Mack is sixth fall time. Jaquavius Highsmith is at ninth. And Mike Renwick is at 10th. And Renwick and Highsmith are still in the 90s. So they could probably get up to like the top five, I think, all time in sacks. So, the career leaderboards look a lot different. However, nobody's broken any in-game records and nobody's broken any in-season records during the 10-year sim. And the only in-game or in-season record broken during this series was Khalil Mack and Sachs. He had 25 the first year, including, like, a lot. He had, like, 7 or 8 in the game against us, I'm pretty sure. So, Khalil Mack has the highest legacy score out of anybody. Jaquavius Highsmith and Mike Renwick are very high as well. They are first ballot Hall of Famers. Probably the two best players of all time on our Super Bowl championship team. Highsmith has a legacy over 26,000. Renwick over 22,000. You have a lot of current day players in here. Darkwell Hyder's over 20,000 legacy score. That's a lot. But yeah, a lot of active players in our Hall of Famers. Carryon Johnson is a Hall of Famer. TJ Hawkinson is a pretty much shoe in for the Hall of Fame. Trey Flowers and Oliver. Both of them are Hall of Famers. Oliver retired with us. Flowers uh, spent one year in Kansas City before retiring. Hawkinson obviously will spend one year in Denver uh, before retiring. A lot of uh, quarterbacks. Baker Mayfield is now a Hall of Famer as well. Adam Vinatieri is in there. Adrian Peterson, Cam Newton. Deshaun Watson's going to make it. And then... As you can see, towards the very bottom, oh, there's Von Moulton, by the way. Von Moulton will be a Hall of Famer. Darius Slade, over 10,000 legacy score. Unfortunately, he only played one more season, and then he uh, he retired. And his name's not showing here, so he should have made a Hall of Fame. Tez Lawson's current legacy score is at 10,002. So if he retired today, he would sneak into the Hall of Fame. But hey, he has done it. And he has a higher legacy score than Packer quarterback Zachary Weary, which is important because both of those guys were very close throughout. Owen Jackson's at around 7,500, so he's had a very good career. He's actually won another Super Bowl with Carolina and then played in another Super Bowl as well. So he's played in four Super Bowls, winning three. That is, that is a lot. The only team in the 10-year sim to win multiple championships is the Arizona Cardinals. 
Mostly, I think NFC teams won. I think the only AFC teams to win Super Bowls were the Jaguars and the Titans. There's Freddie Bonner Sanders at like 6,500. He should be higher than that. Vernon Higgins, defensive end for the Jaguars at 6,500. He was the very first player drafted in the 10-year sim. And uh, he has st stuck with Jacksonville the past 10 years. He's had a pretty good career. There's Tim John at over 5,500 with Jacksonville. So he's had a very good career. That's a lot of legacy points for a kicker. As we continue to scroll forth, a lot of names you might recognize here. Actually, not really. Most of these guys, I have no clue who they are because they've probably been drafted within the past 10 years. We got some quarterbacks, though. Louis Salazar, uh, Max Mahorn, there's Devontae Higgins at around 4,400. So he's had a pretty solid career as well as we continue to scroll here for all the legacy scores. But man, what a series it has been. And I enjoyed the Dolphins franchise last year, but I've got to say... This series was 10 times better than the Dolphins franchise. And you know what? Our franchise in Madden 21, which if you didn't see the team reveal, we're rocking with the Jacksonville Jaguars. My goal is to make the Jaguars franchise 10 times better than this series. I have massive plans for the Jaguars franchise. Plans that have never been done on YouTube before. I plan on making that series the best series in the history of my channel. Which says a lot because I'm proud of a lot of the series I've made. But I have massive Massive ideas for the Jaguars series. I really think this channel will grow a lot in the next year. Or so although we're closing a chapter for this channel by ending the Detroit Lions franchise, we're opening another with starting the Madden 21 Jaguars franchise within the next week. Either Wednesday or Thursday will be the first episode. It, it, it The game is supposed to come out on Thursday for EA Access. Last year it came out a day earlier than it was scheduled to. So, yeah. So for the final time in this series, I think it's only appropriate that we are on um, Tez Lawson's picture here. As for the final time in the Detroit Lions franchise, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Until next time, I'm out. Adios.